What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Webheads Podcast. This is a comic event slash... I guess it's just a comic event podcast. Everything's kind of an event. Yeah. Everything that we're doing is an event. We're doing big things. We can make anything an event. Yeah. And we're going to. Yes. Yes. I am Steven. I'm here with my brother, DeMarco. That's me. You've heard me talk a couple times already. A few times. A few. At least once or twice. If you're counting. Yeah. He's uh, the the co-host of another podcast. Uh, Memories Not Guaranteed. Coming soon. Coming back soon. Coming back for the first time. Coming back after a long hiatus. A long, long hiatus. But here we are today. Uh, We are talking... What event are we doing today? We're doing something... I'm trying to think of, like, big words to use, but... I'm just going to throw it out there. We're doing Avengers vs. X-Men. Ooh. That is 2012? Somewhere around there. Around there? Yeah. I um, I, I believe I, I don't think I read it until uh, you said you are going to do it a few weeks ago. Really? Yeah. I think I might have started it. And I remember when you first got into buying comics, mm. That was I think that was one of the first like events yeah. that you were reading through. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually, I might've read it then when you were done with it, like the actual, yeah, fit, I feel like the floppies you, you would have at least asked for it. Yeah. But I, cause I, I when I was reading through it this time, I remembered a few things of it, mm. but I was like, I, am I just like telling myself that I remember this or do I actually remember? But, um, yeah, that's today's event. Um, this is we're we're not going in order anymore. Like we used to, we figured um, that was going to take far that too long. That took forever. And uh, when, like I was talking to Gabe last time he was here too, um, I we kind of I kind of he threw the 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 thought in my head too that like if we continued going that way that we were, there's no way to grow with Marvel in any of this way. Yeah. Like we're stuck in the past consistently. So at least this way we could uh, talk about some of the more recent ones from 11 years ago. <laughs> But I could also we could also do ones like King and Black from twenty twenty I think or twenty nineteen. Yeah. So we, we could, could jump around. Yeah, we could do the dark web one that just came out a few months ago. So we're not completely stuck in the past anymore, where we're just never going to catch up. Mm. So here we are. Yeah, we can. Um, we have the 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 quantum time jump like in Endgame. We can just jump to any point in. The Marvel comic history and just read any event. Yeah, as long as you just put it back where it was supposed to be, we should be okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, here we are. So I haven't asked you this for a while, but what have you been up to? Man, what have I been up to? Uh, work has been crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, you know, I, for those who don't know, I got a promotion a few weeks ago. Uh, now I handle are you familiar with the money transfer service zelle yes i am <laughs> one of two people who takes care of that <laughs> for the whole for 10 the whole. billion dollar company <laughs> perfect so you know that's been a headache it sounds like it <laughs> don't use Zelle. <laughs> i i i hate it because i i have to use it for a lot of things but it's just i yeah i don't like it you know, it's funny because what I do is I, I pretty much, when the branches or, like, uh, members call us, mm-hmm. they say, and, oh, I have this issue with sale, I'm locked out, or I can't, or I got scammed out of whatever, mm-hmm. I see all those tickets that come in. So I see so many tickets of people, oh, I got scammed out of $500, I got scammed out of $1,000. When we lit, when you load Azel, it says, "Do not send money to anyone you don't know." Yeah, and That's, what do these people do? They send money to people they don't know, and they get scammed out of the money. Yeah, 
they there's also that scam with Zelle too, where like people send you money and then text you like a few minutes later, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't mean to send that to you. Yeah. Can you please send it back? Just send it back." <laughs> I, I I don't know what the the proper thing to do with it is, but they're gonna get you somehow. They're yeah. gonna try to. Yeah, usually from what I've seen, they'll they'll send they'll send money. And then it'll ask you, they'll ask you to send it back. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason, I think they don't have the funds in the first place. So then you're sending them your own money. Or my favorite one that I see a lot is uh, you'll be selling something on, uh, I don't know, OfferUp or something. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, oh, no, they'll be selling it. So then you're like, oh, I want to buy it. They're like, all right, send me... $200 Two hundred dollars in Zelle, so you'll send the two hundred, but then you'll get a text saying you're trying to use Zelle for business purposes. Please upgrade to Zelle Business for five hundred dollars. So then they'll send another five hundred. Now you're out seven hundred dollars to someone who's not going to give you the thing you want, and you call me to say, "Hey, I got scammed," <laughs> and I gotta sit there and act like I care, when really, I know you didn't read any of the the two disclosures we put before. You send money. Yeah, I'll just I'll use the Venmo or something. Just use just don't send money to people you don't know. Yeah, well, I mean that's the main focus of that point. Is <laughs> if you don't know that person, don't send them money. If you're going to to do a transaction out in public with somebody to buy something off of them, just bring the cash. Yeah. And go somewhere public. Bring a friend with you. A family member, something. Someone just to be there with you. Yeah. Have your friend stand on the backside of that other person just in case. <laughs> and then if they try to get off, then you guys can squabble up. <laughs> I, we, there's been people at the company who've gotten scammed. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Those people, I, I don't have words for those people. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't. That doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> Like, you know that you shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. You work in a financial institution. Yeah. Please get your shit together. But other than that, nothing else too much. Playing some video games. I've picked up uh, Marvel Midnight Suns. Mm-hmm. I've been wanting to play that. There is a demo that came out a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I uh, didn't know that. For the weekend, it let you play like the first hour or something like that. Uh, so I played that. Because I wanted to play the game, but, you know, games are expensive now. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to, uh, I was glad they put out a demo to let, it, let you try it. Because it is a little bit different than what I would normally play. Mm-hmm. So it's it's an RPG building up your your made-up character. Yeah. Um, you're building relationships with other Marvel characters. And then the actual battle system is you're thrown onto this battlefield with two other uh, Marvel characters. Mm-hmm. Each turn, you get a certain amount of cards, and you can use those cards for whatever. They can either be, like, attacks um, or, like, skills, so they'll boost, like, your, your chance of hitting, getting, like, a critical hit or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you only, right now, I'm only getting three card plays, so I get to pick three cards per turn, yeah. but I can do, like, I can vault over objects, so that doesn't count towards my card turns. Mm-hmm. Um, I can move the character so that I can, if I hit one of the enemies, it'll throw him into another enemy and that could take out two at a time. Um, so it's just like all the strategy and trying to figure out like Mm -hmm. how you want to go about it, but it's been fun for it so far. I might check it out. I might wait till it goes on sale, but I'll check it out. I only bought it because it was, uh, I think it was the full, it's a full game with all the DLC Oh, normally it would have been like a hundred bucks, but it, I got it for sixty, which is cheaper than what games even cost now. So I was like, "Why not?" Yeah, yeah. I'm playing. Um, I regret to tell people this, but I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> I'm not enjoying it at all. <laughs> a little bit, but not not tons. But uh, I've, I've yeah, I'm, I'm not far into it. I, I'm kind of like one of those people who does like a lot of like side quests and yeah. stuff first before I start doing the main story. Mm. Um, so I've got like six hours logged on it, but I haven't really done like hell stuff. 
Uh, so I've been playing that. Um, I'm kind of I, I pre-ordered WWE 2K23. Is the first one since? Do they skip 21 and do? I uh, skipped 21 and then came back last year. Okay, yeah, so 2023. Yeah, uh, it's a John Cena uh, legacy one. Wow. So um, I remember when I first started watching wrestling, like full time, like I think it was like 2009 or something. Mm. I was like the first couple of years, I was like, <clears throat> "Oh, John Cena's kind of cool. I get it. I understand it." And then after a while, I was like, "How are people? How are grown adults cheering for this?" <laughs> it's the jean shorts for me. I'm like, "How do you? How do you cheer for someone yeah. with jean shorts?" You got to, and then you have these grown adults showing up, and they're in the full the John Cena T-shirt, the headband, the wristbands, and then you got the jorts on too. <laughs> <laughs> not, even, not even the kids are dressed up like this. So for a, a while, <laughs> I really hated John Cena. Like I, I didn't want to see him on my screen. And then, <laughs> then he left, and I was like, "Damn, when's John Cena coming back?" <laughs> and then he came back and had a match. <coughs> came back, had a match at the at the end of this this past year. Mm. This is like the last. This, he was he was at risk of not having his first match in a, in a calendar year for the first time in, like, I think it was, like, 18, 19 years or something. So he, he came back last SmackDown of the year, two <laughs> days before the year ended, had a match, and uh, I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. But he was there. And then what else did I play? Oh, I played, I finished Guardians of the Galaxy for uh, <coughs> PS5. Mm. It was good. I expected it to be. <coughs> the fuck, man? I forgot my inhaler. Because <laughs> um, I, I didn't like it at first because you only control Star-Lord. Yeah. And I was like, I, am I going to enjoy playing Star-Lord the whole time? <coughs> and um, it wasn't that bad. It, you you can control the other team members to a certain extent. Like yeah. You can tell them what to do and stuff like that. But it was good. And there's a twist at the end that I didn't expect. Hmm. I got to finish it then. Yeah. I'm still fairly early in that game. Yeah, I just... When I... Because I started it when I first got it, like a year and a half ago, mm. and then played it for like a week and then never went back. So when I started again, this time I just restarted the whole thing. Mm. But it, I think it took me like, with playing like a, maybe like an hour or two at a time, it took me a couple of weeks, like two weeks to finish. Not bad. No. I, I've, I'm trying to go back now and still <coughs> catch up on some games that... Like, I didn't finish before, or, like... I still never finished King Kingdom Hearts. No. I have one and two on my system right now, and I made it... I played for, like, two hours the other day, and I haven't gone back. I remember when we were... When the game first came out, I had gotten it for my birthday. Mm -hmm. And then... I don't think... Me personally, I don't think I beat it. I know you played it a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you beat it that time. No, I made it to a couple of the worlds, but um, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know if something happened to the disc or I just stopped playing. But, I think because the memory cards would always like delete our stuff. Oh yeah, that was probably yeah. So that that's, that was it. It deleted my whole save file. Yeah, and I was like, I'm not going back and doing this over again. And then I played it again like a couple years later. And I got pretty far, mm -hmm. and then the same thing happened. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going back. No. And then a few years ago, I bought a PS4, mm -hmm. and I bought Kingdom Hearts for it. And I couldn't get past the first town. I forgot what to do. Yeah. I was like, I'm not doing this shit again. No. <laughs> so they had the, on the PlayStation, I, I can never remember what it's called, the Game Pass type thing. Mm -hmm. um, they have the the two pack thing the one and two, or one and a half two and a half mm. so i got that so and because i had bought kingdom hearts three like four or five months ago mm. so i was like i, I want to play through all of them and 
haven't started three at all. And I haven't even made it to a different world in, in the first one yet. And it's funny, I actually started at three. Really? Because I think they had it on Game Pass. Mm-hmm. So I played it for a little bit. I think I only got to like a Hercules level or something. And then. See, my, my thing is like, I'm so. When I play games, I'm so like into like collecting everything and getting mm-hmm. everything. So for me, it's like when I'm in a level, I try to find everything that I need. But I also have to tell myself I don't have time to do that anymore. Let me just play through the game yeah. and like just enjoy it. But that takes me a lot harder, a lot longer to do than. You know what I started doing? Um, I just I play on like the easiest. No, mode. yeah, I do that too too. And because that's like. I don't want to keep playing the same levels over and over, trying to get past it. Like I just give me just the want story. To enjoy the game. Yeah, give me the story. Let me enjoy it. Let me enjoy the characters, shit like that. Mm. And then I'll go on to the next game. Yeah, that's why I play Guardians on. Because at first I was like, when I play like sports games, I'll, I'll move the level up a little bit. Mm. Not a lot. I'm still gonna win, but <laughs> like. I'll move it up, but like on the like these story based games, the easiest one. Yeah, well, what did I do that with that. recently? I think I did it. I was playing Control. I think I did it like on just above normal. I think, mm. and then there's a boss that I kept dying on, so I was like, I'll move it down to normal. <laughs> and then I kept dying on it again. Mm-hmm. I was like, this isn't even fun. Why? Like, I just want to play the game and yeah. like have a good time. So I moved it down to easy and like I started flying through the game. So even on Guardians, I had it on easy, and then like the very last battle that I did, I lost like ten times. <laughs> it's like why am I? This is the easiest setting. Why am I losing like this? I was like, I can't even imagine moving this up. So I would have just never played the game again. Ah oh, man, but uh, yeah, I haven't been doing anything else. Work is uh, the same as usual. No comments there. Um, and then just playing games. I went to Disneyland for a weekend, me and Ferial. Um, just had a cool little weekend together. Um, we, we really just ate, like, nonstop. I was eating these wild-ass breakfasts, <laughs> crazy-ass <laughs> lunch and dinner. And most of our money was on, spent on food. That's the way to do it. Yeah. I got a few pins. Um, I got this nice little sweater. Yeah, now that I see it on you, I'm like, yeah, maybe I should have bought that. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to. And then um, to the, they had, a, like, a black one that I wanted. And for those that obviously can't see, it's, like, this uh, it lavender, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's lavender uh, Disneyland sweater with Mickey Mouse on the front for the 100th celebration. Mm. So they had, like, a black one with, like, the kind of the same design. But it was, I, I want to say it was a zip up mm. and the design was on like the heart area. And I saw it in person. I was like, nah, I don't like that. And then the first day I saw this, they had my size and they had just put a, a whole rack of them out. I was like, nah, I don't know. <laughs> and then we went through the day and then like later at night we were back at the hotel and I was like, yeah, I kind of want that sweater. And then I, this is like the most popular one, I guess. So like. I went back to where I saw that rack, thinking, like, there might be, like, one or two over there. Nothing. I didn't find this until, like, the the second full day that we were there. <laughs> and it was the only one in my size. After, but, and I, and I got it, like, first thing in the morning. Mm. And um, when I went back to that area, like, an hour later, all sold out. All they had were, like, extra smalls. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. And even the guy at the counter was like, "Oh, you, like you lucked out. Like, didn't like, they only have like four or five in each like part that are yeah. like this size." I was like, "Perfect." <laughs> but yeah, it was cool. It was a cool little trip. They were doing the Lunar New Year uh, little food booths mm. around, so we got some good stuff out of there. Um, the, we had a lot of the 100 celebration stuff. Um, we went in right before Valentine's Day, so they had Valentine's Day stuff, too. It was a whole bunch of stuff. So I had a Dole Whip for breakfast one morning. <laughs> I, <laughs> that would have messed my stomach up. I had a, that morning, I had a peach cobbler donut, 
<laughs> uh, strawberry shortcake Dole Whip. <laughs> and <laughs> and Ferial had uh, bow buns from Tropical <laughs> Hideaway. That was the most, that was the weirdest breakfast I've ever had. But the shit was good. I finished the whole Dole Whip. I was like, I shouldn't be eating this because I know I'm going to get a headache. Mm. And I made it like halfway through and I was like, I don't think I'm going to get a headache from this. <laughs> and I, I just I finished it off. I was perfect the whole day. It was great. You you would be happy to know uh, while you were gone and Zara was hanging out at our house. Yeah. <clears throat> I was talking to her and she had like these playing cards, these Mickey Mouse mm-hmm. playing cards. So I would take each one out because each card had a different Disney character on there. So I'd take one out and ask her who it was. Yeah. She knew who everybody was. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah, was, she's was, uh, <laughs> that Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is on the the Daisy one, and at first she just kind of like didn't pay any attention to me. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, Daisy's not, maybe that's not her character. So I went to everybody else, and she was just throwing out names. Yeah, and I finally took Daisy out again, and then she knew who Daisy was. Yeah, she knows everybody: <laughs> Clarabelle, Daisy, Cuckoo Loca, <laughs> as <laughs> it's everybody. And then she does like, um, she does all of their voices too. So like, and, but sometimes it's really good, and it's, <laughs> and she does like Minnie Mouse's voice mm. a lot, and it's like, oh, she's got that spot on. <coughs> I'm pretty proud of her. Um, she was even uh, talking about Moon Girl the other day. <laughs> Speaking of Marvel stuff, uh, oh, did you watch it? Yeah, I think I'm like episode. Four or five or something, maybe six. I'm only, I'm still in the first one, mm. but the first one's really good. Yeah. And I really, <laughs> I really like the art. Mm. Um, I haven't looked into the cast. I only learned, I only know uh, Lawrence Fishburne's the grandfather. Uh, no, he's actually the Beyonder. Okay, well, I didn't get that far into the show. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up on, Wik- but it, <laughs> on Wikipedia. But it, I, uh, it sounded, the grandfather sounded like him too. No, yeah, they, so, I, I don't want to say anybody's name, because I can't, re- I can only remember, like, parts of their name, mm-hmm. um, but the grandmother's voiced by, uh, if you're familiar with the Luke Cage Netflix show, mm-hmm. um, what was her name, Mariah, the lady who's, like, a politician, Cottonmouth's, mm-hmm. like, cousin, yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. so that's, that's her, uh, the mom is uh, Shazir Zameda from like SNL. Oh, okay. And then the dad and uh, Lunella themselves. I'm not Brie, Lar- Brie, not Brie Larson. Allison Brie is on it. Really? Yeah, she's in a couple episodes. Uh, who else is on it? So uh, Diamond White is Lunella. And she is. She's been in a lot of stuff that, uh, unfortunately, I just don't know. Yeah, like a lot of these... A lot of TV <clears throat> shows. A few of them I've been in stuff I'm, I'm not familiar with. She was in the... Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, okay, Alfrey Wood... Alfrey Woodard. Yeah. Is the... Uh, um, yeah, I've seen her in a lot of stuff. Okay. All right. Gary Hansen... Oh, okay. The grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've seen him. I can't remember what he's in off the top of my head. But he's been in the Boondocks. Uh, his uncle Ruckus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He, he does like a lot of like voice voiceover stuff. Okay. Yeah. No, that show's good though. Yeah, <clears throat> I really like it. I was surprised because like, you know, I mean, we're older and like, yeah, we can still watch cartoons, but sometimes like. They're really geared towards yeah. kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it, like, I watched the first episode. And I was like, okay, I can kind of get into this. And it was, it was surprisingly not as, like, you know, on some kids' shows, they, they kind of make you turn your brain off because you sometimes you're just like, why would somebody do that in person? Yeah. This one was just kind of like, okay, like, they're really doing like the funny like cartoon stuff but yeah. also taking it like seriously with like you know how it's gonna with like the villains and like the superheroing and stuff like that yeah yeah so um i don't know if i've mentioned this before on here i think i have but um one of the videos that we're gonna have um hopefully coming soon is i'm watching through every 
Marvel animated show and ranking all of them. There's a lot of these shows, guys, so <laughs> it might take a little bit longer. What are you on now? I still have like 17 shows left. And <laughs> the one that's been really uh, just staring at me every time I look at the list is Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. That's the one from like 10 years ago? Something like that. But they have like 127 episodes. Mm. I just keep staring at it. I'm like, oh boy. I made it through a lot of shows already. <laughs> but I've, I've watched all together in like the last, I'd say the last year. Mm. I've watched like 23 shows. Like all the way through from first episode to the last. Mm. Which is uh, one surprising to me that I even stuck with it that long. Yeah, um, that is, I mean, I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> the only show I haven't watched all the way through was uh, Agents of Smash. Okay. But, it, like, nothing's going to change And <laughs> after those first, like, six, seven episodes. It's not a bad show. It's not at the bottom of my list, but I just couldn't keep going. I had, But at that point, I had, like, I had already watched, like, 21 or something seasons of shows. Like, back to back. Like, when I finished one, like, that same day, I was starting a new one. Yeah. So, I was like, I just keep going. But at that point, I was already like, nah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to make it through a whole series of this. (coughs) But uh, this is Moon Girls. Moon Girls is going to move up the list, I can tell you that. It's it's good so far. Yeah. Um, What else we got? We got, oh, so comics. For uh, Captain America number one, or sorry, Captain Britain number one. Uh, Betsy is Psylocke from the X Men. She has like a really convoluted yeah history. But her brother is uh, the original Captain Britain. Is <clears throat> right currently right now in the comic books? Do you know is is Betsy? So is Psylocke and Captain Britain one and the same? Cause that I don't know. Okay, because I know like in their history, it's like they switch minds and they switch bodies and yeah. then they switch back. And I can understand that, but like, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I'm picking that one up this week. Uh, <coughs> sorry, Carnage number 10. Um, That's a good series. Is it? Yeah. I got to get that. I got to start reading that one then. Marvel Unlimited. Yep. It's on there. Uh, Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man number five. Is that the last one? I hope so. <laughs> I stopped reading after the third one. <laughs> or it might have been the second one. <clears throat> um, it just wasn't... They weren't keeping me going after the second one. I wanted to get it just because it looked cool. The artwork is amazing. But since, you've, since it's come out and everything I've asked you about it, it doesn't seem like it's... Mm-hmm. Anything if you want a better it. Spider-Man story, Spider-Man uh, The Lost Hunt um, is pretty good. Okay. It's It takes place right after uh, Craven's Last Hunt. Mm. Um, and it's it's pretty good so far. It's only it's four issues in. Uh, I think the fifth one comes out, I want to say next week, but I'm not sure. But that one's good. Uh, Deadpool number four. It's Deadpool. Uh, Doctor Strange Fall Sunrise number four. I haven't been reading that one, but there is a new Doctor Strange starting next month in March. Uh, Immoral X Men. Uh, I'm picking that one up. It's uh, there's a new event that just started. Uh, Sins of Sinister. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going a hundred years into the future. Um, but it, it's it's been good so far. I'm only two issues in on it. I, that one looks interesting, but I, like <clears throat> I'm just not caught up on any X Men stuff, so I'm yeah. kind of afraid to jump into that. And, I you know, don't think it's gonna throw you off too much. <coughs> um, do you know any of the, any of the uh, Krakoa stories? Anything like that? Vaguely. Okay. It might not throw you off too much just because they're going. They're almost immediately going into the future mm. on things, so you're probably not going to miss too much, but it's it's good so far. 
like I said, I'm only two issues in, um, and it's over like four different issues or comics. Mm. So, Immoral X Men's, Immoral X Men number one is like the third or fourth one. So, we'll see. Uh, Peter Parker and, Mor- and Miles Morales Spider Man Double Trouble number four, Planet Hulk World Breaker number four. Punisher World, uh, Punisher War Journal, Base Number One, Sabretooth and the Exiles Number Four, Savage Avengers Number Ten, She Hulk Number Ten, She Hulk always has the best covers. Always, every one of the covers that I've seen for this run have been amazing. Uh, Star Wars Doctor Afra Number Twenty Nine. Star Wars Yoda, number four. Strange Academy Finals, number four. Amazing Spider-Man, number 20. Thor, number 31. And Tiger Division, number four. <clears throat> um, one story that I will say for uh, my recommendations that just finished um, does a little five-issue run of The Exterminators. Okay. And it had Jubilee, Boom Boom, and the Dazzler and Laura Kinney, X23. Um, was it just those four? Yeah. But that shit was funny as hell. That shit was so funny. And it was hella out of pocket shit that happened in that story. <laughs> it was funny. So if you get if any of you guys, I think at least the first two issues should be on Marvel Unlimited right now. Mm. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're going to put out the trade paperback. In the next couple of months, but that one was really good, and I kind of like. I'm starting to really like how the X Men stories are written right now. It's funny you say that because I, I think reading this show made me not like any of the X Men stories, mm-hmm. M- mainly just because there's so many X Men. Yeah. And like, I kind of like when stories are a little bit more focused on one or two characters rather than mm-hmm. a whole team, so. If if these ones are good, maybe this will be, like, my... The Exterminators one was really good. I like it because, yeah, I, sometimes the stories where there's 15 people on the team is just too much. Mm. But the Exterminators one is good because it's only just the four of them. Um, and they're just the base of the story. Uh, the <laughs> Sins of Sinister one is a little bit more heavy on just the X, like, the mutants as a whole. Um, and, um, what else did I read? But I, I just like the way that they're, uh, they're setting up the books. Like, if you read through them, like, there's, like, little breaks in the story. Like, in <coughs> one of the Exterminators one, um, they, it's just, like, a, a screenshot of, like, the text messages between the four girls. That shit was funny. <laughs> but it's like, there's just like little breaks like in between it. Even in the uh, Sins of Sinister one, there's uh, Storm and the Brotherhood of Mutants. Mm. Um, even in that one, there's just like little breaks in between the story to just kind of like give you like little back pieces or like add more to the story. <coughs> but I've, I'm only seeing stuff like that in like the X-Men stories or the mm. mutant stories. So that was that was for this week. Real quick, I'll give you guys what's coming out next week. Um, and let's see. Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty, number 10. Now, I'm still going on that one. That one's really good. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider, number one, is coming out. It's a new story. Uh, the first series that came out with him, great. I never finished it. It was amazing. One of my favorite stories. So I think this is <coughs> is this the same writer from that one? I think Donnie Donnie Cates. No, this oh, sorry, one. this is a different writer. This is Stephanie Phillips. Okay. Um, but it should be good nonetheless. Ghost Rider number twelve is coming out. I'm still on that one. It's really good. Um, Hollow's Eve number one. If you read any, of, I don't think you read any of the dark web stuff. Not yet. But if you do, there's a character. I I believe she's a new character, a character called Hollow's Eve. Oh, yeah. um, she oh. was running around with uh, Chasm, 
Uh, that's uh, formerly his girlfriend, um, but they have, towards the end of the Dark Web series, they've had to go their separate ways, so now she has her own run. Uh, I am Iron Man number one. It's coming out. Murder World, game over. Number one, I've been reading through that one, too. It's a fun little one. <clears throat> Arcade sets up a, um, a game. It started off with 200 people, and then whoever finishes the game, the last person to finish the game uh, wins like $100 million. But it's it's just fair game. People are, you have to make it through everything. People are killing each other, and then he has like these uh, LMDs, these life model decoys of Spider-Man, uh, Wolverine, uh, Moon Knight, and they're all just coming in. The LMDs are just coming in to kill the people. So if you can survive it, cool, you get to the next round. Um, and, uh, yeah, this game over one is the last issue, but it's been cool. It's fun. Uh, Rogue and Gambit, number one. I don't know if I'm going to pick that up. Gambit hasn't been my favorite lately. It's, and I like Gambit. I like him as a character, like, just like his design and like his power set. Yeah. I don't think I have any history with him besides like the X-Men animated show. Yeah, that one I love. Yeah. <laughs> that accent? <laughs> Chef's kiss. Perfect. But I just didn't like the, the Gambit series that just came out uh, in the comic books. Like last year. Just wasn't it. I didn't like it. Oh, yeah, I think I remember you telling me. Uh, Spider Gwen, Shadow Clones number one. Probably not going to pick that up because I didn't like the Spider Gwen series that came out last year either. Uh, Spider-Man number six, uh, this is part of the end of Spider-Verse series, so that one, I'm still going on, I got number five, last week, I haven't read it yet, um, but I, it's only because I got, like, 12 books last week, <laughs> uh, there's a new series, Spider-Man Unforgiven, which I think is just, like, a one-off, because I think next, the week after is X-Men Unforgiven or something like that, um, so I think they're just like a small little series. Star Wars number 32, Star Wars Han Solo and Chewbacca number 10, Star Wars Hidden Empire number 4, Star Wars The High Republic, The Blade number 3, Star Wars The Mandalorian number 8, Venom number 17, and X-Force number 38. So that's that was the, the for the next two weeks, the comics that you got coming out. Um, some other ones I'm reading right now. Uh, the Gold Goblin. It's pretty good. Um, uh, Norman Osborn's trying to go on his uh, kind of redemption tour, trying to uh, rid himself of his past sins, and it's not going too well. Uh, Red, have you heard of Red Goblin? Or have you read anything about him? Uh, I, I read some stuff about him. A uh, little Normie Osborn. Yeah. I, the first one just came out. Um, Last week, mm -hmm. I believe. That one was okay. I picked it up because he was in the... He popped into the dark web oh, crossover. Okay. Um, and it's cool. I don't know, I'll pick up the second one. See where that goes. I just finished uh, Miles Morales' uh, Spider-Man. Because mm -hmm. uh, I know they just relaunched it. Yeah. So, yeah, they're only they're like four issues in on the relaunch. Yeah, I'm waiting for that to show up on, on the app, but the other this 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 one was cool. There are some arcs that I was just kind of like, just reading through just to get it over with. Yeah. Um, but overall, it was a pretty good series, I'd say. What else am I reading? I just start. I'm still reading Avengers. I had to give that a break because I was just kind of reading too much. Mm -hmm. So. I'll go back to that one eventually, but oh, I'm I'm reading uh Monica Rambo Photon. Okay. That one's a new one that's like three or four three issues in. Um that one's pretty good. She's um she is kinda she seems like she's kinda lost in like this time space loop and like every time she travels well, she got into like a fight, traveled into space, and then when she came back down, um, 
she was in a different time and a different realm altogether. And then every time she she travels somewhere else, she because she has the light powers. Mm-hmm. Every time she travels, she ends up in a different uh, reality, mm-hmm. and she can't figure out why. So that one's pretty good. Oh, there's a new Silver Surfer that just came out. Uh, the first one was a few weeks ago, um, but I'm not really sure where that one's going yet. But the artwork's really good. Did you ever read the the nice catch? The what was that Silver Surfer, where he like gets, he like turns like black or something. Uh no, I forgot what it was called. The only Silver Surfer story I actually read through was um. I can't remember what that guy's name was, but it was really fucking good. Uh, 2015, I think. I can't remember what it was. Hmm. He goes off with this uh, with this girl from Earth. And... Oh, was that the, the Mike Allred? Yeah. I think I picked <clears> that one up, too. Yeah. That was, that was really good. Really good. The one that the one that I'm talking about, that one is I think it's tied into like the whole Venom and King and Black thing. Because mm-hmm. I I think I read like the first issue and it has to do with like the symbiotes and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So seemed pretty cool. I'll check it out. All right, guys, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a a quick commercial break, and we will be right back after this commercial break. Have you ever wanted to get out of a job? Not go to that party your girlfriend wants to take you to? Well, with the Essex Corporation, we can make a clone that can help you in that situation. With promo code WEBHEADS, you can get one free clone with all 10 purchases of clones. Remember, with Essex, you're nothing but meat. (laughs) Headaches, we all get them. We all wish they would go away. There is a solution. The Webheads Podcast. Just one listen. There's no more tension. No more throbbing. No more pain. Your headache, sorrows, confusion, completely gone. The Webheads Podcast. All right, welcome back. I would say, all right, so we're going to get into the the story, the main story. Story of this episode. The Avengers versus the X-Men. Yes. Now, as you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. this was... This has this story has a special place in my heart, mm-hmm. even though it's, I I can admit it's not the best story. Mm-hmm. Um, it does have a special place in my heart because uh, this was one of the first stories that I picked up when mm-hmm. I first started reading books. Yeah, I had, you know, just got a new job or my first job, mm-hmm. started making money, um, you know, and us growing up, we didn't have. Our parents bought us what they could. And yeah. Yeah, we weren't poor by any means, but yeah. like it was like you were getting stuff on your birthday for Christmas yeah. and anything between those times was a surprise. Yeah. Of some kind. So like me making money and I was like and we were living on our own. Yeah. And I had this huge room. I never had my own well, I had my own room to myself, but I had a room that I wanted to like make my own. Yeah. So you know, I was with, I remember I was with my friends. We were went to go get some food, and next door to the spot was a comic book store. I walked in there, and I was just, like, amazed by all, not just the comic books, but they had the action figures, mm-hmm. they had everything. And I well, was, do you remember what store it was? I, I forgot what it's called, but it's in Union City. They moved from where they were just around the corner. It was right next door to um, Bronco Billy's. Oh, okay. Uh, That's they, where it used to be. Yeah. Okay. But they moved just they're like across the, the street. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just remember going in there and just being like amazed by like all this stuff. And at the time, uh, Avengers versus X Men had just 
kicked off. I think they might have been in maybe like issue four or five at that point. Mm -hmm. Because the first, I got like the first four issues and they were all second prints. Mm -hmm. So they had gone through all the first first prints and everything. I didn't care. I was just like, yeah, I'm going to jump in. Because it seemed like a perfect jumping off point, Mm -hmm. right? So I remember I bought like the first maybe five, six issues that one time. Mm -hmm. And I was just like juice. I'm like, I'm going to finally read some comics that actually like matter. Um, but it was, it was, yeah, a special place in my heart because it's how, how big can you, you can't get any bigger than that. Not really. Literally. You, the two biggest teams yeah. going against each other. And I, I do see like a lot of, like if you go, if you go on the internet, people always like try to do like the whole, like, oh, the Avengers were never really that big of a team. No one cared about the Avengers before the movies came out. Mm. And it's... I, I don't know, really, truly, because I, I wasn't paying attention to this stuff, like, wholeheartedly, like, when we were younger. Yeah. <clears throat> but, it's, like, the Avengers have been going since the 60s. You're telling me that this isn't, like, one of the most famous teams to ever come out? And yeah. the X-Men, too? And, and truly, who cares if they got big of the movies? Like, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Now you get bigger stories and you get more. These are the same people that that are probably gatekeeping their favorite artists because they don't want anybody else to, yeah. oh, I love him. Get over it. <laughs> well, I liked him before he did this. Get over it. We all like him now. <laughs> so, if you guys can't surmise what the plot of this event is, mm-hmm. uh, just based off the title... Uh, it's a 2012 crossover event that featured, uh, yeah, almost like a, it was like a really wide branching story. So it, mm-hmm. it was 12 issues, but it also just like any other comic book event, it had like the side issues and like the stuff going on in each character's own runs. Yeah. Um, but what I think it did kind of. I don't want to say uniquely, but just kind of different Mm -hmm. is throughout the main 12 issues, you get the main story, but in those stories, you'll also see like the end or the beginning of some battles between some characters, Mm -hmm. but you don't really see what happens in those battles Mm -hmm. in the main stories. So you would really just go and get these, uh, I forgot what they would call them, but there were side issues and it would be like just that one battle and that one issue. So yeah, they did like Spider-Man and Colot versus Colossus and all these other characters. So you, yeah, or at least just to see the battles, um, you would need those other issues as well. Yeah, and then so the whole plot of this story is the X-Men at this point in time mm-hmm. were almost extinct. They were decimated. Decimated. So Scarlet Witch had a, in a previous story, had a mental breakdown um, and uttered the those classic words, no more mutants. Mm-hmm. And with her powers, pretty much wiped all, almost all mutants from the face of the earth. Yeah, I think this, it was like only under something left, right? Yeah, give or take, yeah. something like that. But it's, essentially she took the powers away from millions of mutants mm-hmm. and just you turned them into regular people at that point. So the rest of the mutants banded together what they could um, and just try to survive. And, you know, they're still being per- persecuted and hunted down by all these other, you know, I don't know what you would call them, like, not religious people, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no. pretty much just haters of mutants. Yeah. They were always, they're always being, X-Men are just, that's their whole thing. Mm-hmm. People hate mutants. They hunt them down. Yeah, any any then, group that you can see in real life that's hated by another group. Yeah, you could probably just like say that <laughs> mutants are that. Yeah, <laughs> it fits in perfectly. So while they were, uh, you know, just banding together of this small group of mutants, uh, eventually there was a mutant that was born because no mutants were being born after mm-hmm. that. So <clears throat> they had their powers wiped, and then no mutants were being born. But eventually there was a mutant that was born named Hope. Well, actually, her name wasn't Hope. Uh, she was born, but everyone looked at her as sort of like the messiah. Like, mm-hmm. she's the one who's going to bring mutants back. Yeah. This is the, the first one. So she's born. 
Um, and of course, she's hunted down. Yeah. <laughs> Why uh, not? <laughs> and then Cyclops, his son Cable, from the future, mm-hmm. decides that he's going to take it upon himself to protect this child. So yeah. what he does is he takes the baby into the future and raises her to be sort of like ready for the fight that's going to come. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he eventually names her Hope. And then they come back to the present. And, all, you know, years pass, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They go through the whole history, uh, which eventually lands us at the point, the beginning of this story, where now the event, the X-Men are now ready for, or they think since Hope is the Messiah, now that the Phoenix is coming, mm-hmm. that she she's the one who's going to take this power and bring life back to the mutant race. Yeah. And yeah, I mean it's a it sounds pretty huge and like blockbuster event. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some parts there are other parts are kind of just like, ugh. Yeah, it's because <laughs> uh, the the main story itself is twelve issues. Yeah, I believe. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, did it need to be exactly twelve issues? Probably not. No, but. Like, as a comic book fan and, like, an MCU fan, mm. like, d- this is kind of one of those stories that I wish, like, could be turned into a movie down the line. Because mm. it's, like, it's it's epic. Yeah. It's, like, there's, I don't, I can't think of, t- I mean, I can't think of tons of events that have happened before this or after it that have kind of giving me like like oh no this is like serious like you started and you're like like how does how do you guys come out of this yeah and yeah it, it yeah, was that's good yeah i mean it, like i said it's gonna be one of those stories where you're either gonna like it or you're not what's that a drill bit was, <laughs> i don't know how it got into this pocket <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, 12 issues. Mm-hmm. It, what I actually found kind of interesting about this is that it has it's written by five different uh, writers. Is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they all had different issues to write in different points. But we have Jason Aaron, uh, Brian Michael Bendis, Ed Brubaker, Jonathan Hickman, and Matt Fraction. That's a hell of a team to be writing. So Jason Aaron, uh, he is. Well, he he just finished his current Avengers run. Mm-hmm. Um, he did the Thor story involving um, Jane Foster, Thor, mm-hmm. uh, Gore the God Butcher was introduced in his run. Um, that's more what I'm familiar with them. Yeah, I'm pretty. There's one more that I forgot. But he did that. Brian Michael Bendis, uh, co-creator of Miles Morales Spider-Man. Uh, not the series, but actual Miles Morales. Yeah. He's co-creator of, uh, who else? Ironheart, Riri Williams. He did a lot of, he did his own Avengers run as well, too. Mm-hmm. And he did Fantastic Four for a little bit, yeah. too. He, he had his hand in a lot of different. He did the Age of uh, Ultron, too, didn't he? Did he? I think so. Or at least I, I know he wrote part of it. Huh. Yeah. Uh, Ed Burr- Brubaker. The comics, not the movie. <laughs> Ed Brubaker, co creator of uh, Winter Soldier. So he's the one responsible for bringing Bucky back to life after being gone from comics for, I don't know, 40 years, something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, Jonathan Hickman, he also did a, an Avengers run recently. That was the one with uh, that gave us incursions. And he also did uh, Fantastic Four too. Yeah, he did uh, led us to Secret Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah he he did Secret Wars too, um, and then Matt Fraction, who's responsible for Hawkeye. S- Hawkeye. He also did uh, what was it X Force? Mm-hmm. He had a he had a run on X Force. That was the one with I think Wolverine X twenty three. I think Deadpool was on there. Like he that was a good good uh run on that one yeah but all these are all these writers had a part in 
this Avengers vs. X-Men story. Mm. Um, the artist, I know you liked this one. I, f- <laughs> I found it really distracting because I was like, when is he going to stop? But uh, John Romita Jr. did the art oh, for wolf. at least. I read through this, these 12 issues, and I was like, oh, God. He's, <laughs> I just don't know why he draws. Like, every face is exactly the same with just different hair. It's just so squ- so square. Yeah. Like, you know faces don't look like that. <laughs> and it, that's what kind of, like, when I first read the the book back in 2012, Yeah. I didn't care much because mm. I was like, okay, this is just comic books. But spending all those times over the years to kind of, like, read and see different art, I was like, I don't like this guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, he's, it's, and to go back to it now and to reread this and see that for six issues, yeah, really pissed me. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I, I'm sorry. I just, it's just, I don't love his art. <laughs> I don't even like it. <laughs> but then we also had other artists like uh, Oliver Coipel and mm-hmm. Adam Kubert. Um. Oliver uh, Coppel, I really like his stuff. Mm-hmm. He he did the covers for I think all of them. Maybe I know this is by Jim Chung, Chung. Um, but all really all the art in here, besides John Romita Jr.'s, mm-hmm. I like. Yeah, it either delivers like really good like facial like expression, or. You know, like, the action's, like, all there. They could fit a lot of action into, like, a few panels. Yeah. Or they really just tell the story with, like, the few panels that they have. Mm-hmm. But John Romita Jr. just... <laughs> I was just... I was rushing through those pages just it's to get past like it. They, it's like they told him what to draw. He was like, yeah, I got you. And then he sent it back, like, ten minutes later. <laughs> yeah. He was like, yeah, this is it, right? Thanks, John. It just always feels... And, and I swear, this isn't going to become a John Romita, like hate podcast but it just kind of seems like his the the limbs on the characters don't bend the way they're supposed to mm-hmm. there's never any like right bend it's just like it's like a noodle that looks like it's being bent or something yeah every it's the flat faces yeah that too come on john <laughs> we're better than this so for this story uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is sort of the, the accumulation of a lot of different books that mm-hmm. come. So not only was it Hope being born and becoming the mutant messiah, but this is uh, House of M, Avengers Disassembled. This is years of storytelling just kind of accumulating to this one event because there's a lot of backstory yeah. for a lot of the characters. So some of the big players in the story are Hope, obviously, um, Scarlet Witch is a big one. Um, Scott Summers, uh, Emma Frost, I guess we would say, mm-hmm. Namor, um, Ileana, and Peter Rasputin. Yeah. They would be big players, but I'd say more or less Scott and Hope would be main focuses on the x-men side yeah hope would be i'd say more of the main focus leading up in like the first few issues Mm -hmm. and then it switches over to scott yeah so if you guys aren't familiar scott summers leader of the x-men most of the time cyclops cyclops shoots optic blast from his eyes his his ruby quartz (laughs) glasses (laughs) uh who was I going to say? He's got to let you know that those are Ruby Quartz. Uh, for you guys who don't know, Hope Hope Summers. So while not technically related to the Summers family, mm-hmm. she was adopted by Cable. So technically it makes her part of the family. And she has red hair and kind of yeah. looks like Jean. So what a coincidence. <laughs> um, but her powers are... Um, she has power manipulation. So uh, power absorption <laughs> immunity. So... Someone like Rogue can't touch her and steal her powers. Mm-hmm. Uh, power enhancement, so she can basically just keep getting stronger. Um, she can give power to other people, so she can bestow them with power. She can activate people's powers. 
Um, she can track people based off of their powers. So energy signatures. Um, she can work with somebody and create like a synergy. So like either amplify their powers or they can amplify hers. Mm -hmm. Uh, she can copy someone's powers and she has, uh, what is that? She can kind of like use her psionic blast to kind of create like weapons, sort Mm -hmm. of like Psylocke. Mm -hmm. So she's sort of a telepath in a way, but also kind of everything she's almost, like a ba- she's almost like a battery if you think about it like yeah. she can grant power she can take power she amplify it everything yeah she is everything yeah she's a all-around character in the sports game and then so yeah like i mentioned cyclops is a big part the avengers aren't it doesn't really focus too much on any specific avenger mm-hmm. um they're really just or I guess I uh, from for our for the reader's sake, it's Captain America. Yeah, he is the leader of the Avengers at this time, but he's sort of like the reader's eyes on that side of the team. We don't really dive too much, at least in the main story, into other Avengers and how they're really dealing with the situation. Yeah. Um. So what I like about the story is, or not really that I like, but what I in the second read through, what I found is how difficult it must have been for Scott. Mm-hmm. So with mutants almost gone, Cyclops is m- maybe like, I guess the equivalent of like a rebel leader to the cause. Mm-hmm. Right. So his whole life, he's been trained and taught to protect humans or mutants. You have to protect everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to be that, that fighting cause for, for the world, not just for the mutant people, but for humans as well. Mm-hmm. And Professor X taught him that. Yeah. But to go through life and have all these people hate you and try to fight you and kill you, and then to have one of your own basically take all of your pow- everybody's powers away and mm-hmm. just leave a few, and then to feel so hopeless and... I mean, you're you know, almost extinct at that yeah, point. Yeah. The, the people that you've worked so hard to protect and you've done everything to do to to protect them Mm -hmm. it's just taken away from you without any of your control and then all of a sudden this mutant pops up and after no mutants are being able to be born and now you feel like okay this is this is a sign this is the person that's going to take us to where we need to go yeah and so when the phoenix shows up if you guys don't remember when we did Dark Phoenix Saga, mm-hmm. it is a power, it's a cosmic power of death and, des- and destruction. Yeah. But death and rebirth as well, too. So you can try to control it, but it's, essentially it's going to control you and it's going to cause you to do terrible, terrible things. Yeah, it brings out the darkest parts of you. Yeah. So with hope being born and the Phoenix coming, Cyclops feels that it's a... He, he's trained Hope over and over for this moment. Yeah. Because why else would this baby be born if not to bring life back to everything? And so that's kind of where his mindset is. Mm-hmm. He's so caught up with, we need to get her ready for the Phoenix. She's going to be the host of the Phoenix. And whatever is going to happen is meant to happen. It needs to help us get you know this is just a road bump in the road to mutants being the superior race and being back to where they were Mm -hmm. and so that's why he is so caught up in allowing the phoenix to to do what it needs to do this time yeah even though he's seen what it did to gene way back when and the destruction and what he had to do to stop it yeah he wants hope to have it because he feels like she's the one who's going to be able to control it better than Gene has. Yeah. Yeah. So, basically, so the beginning of the story is, starts with Nova, Sam Alexander. Mm -hmm. He's flying in super fast, like, faster than he can control. Yeah. And he's flying in New York. He he can barely even control it, so he's dodging airplanes, buildings, last second, crashing through stuff. Mm -hmm. He finally lands, and it's like the scene in... uh, Endgame, 
or oh yeah infinity war when the whole crashes through mm. he's basically there to warn everybody that hey the phoenix is coming prepare yourselves yeah and so he is intercepted on the ground by the avengers and that's where they find out basically oh shit the the phoenix is coming now for humans they don't have the same viewpoint on the phoenix as mutants do yeah all they see the phoenixes as a uh, destructive force that <laughs> really can't be contained mm -mm. it's going to kill and burn everything in its sight and then move on to another planet and do it all over again until it's stopped yeah so when the humans the avengers find out that it's coming they have to basically gather their ranks and then come up with a solution on how they're going to fix this issue mm -hmm. they know it's going to go to hope because they know what the mutants have gone through at this point they know hope is around and they know what they need to do they're just not sure if it's going to go as easy as they think it is mm -hmm. So at this point, the X-Men live in uh, on this island called Utopia. Mm -hmm. It's right off the coast of San Francisco, so right in the bay. Uh, and they're just living peacefully. They're just doing their thing. Really, I mean, it's, it's a marvel of places that they live. It's mm -hmm. not just a building. It's technology and stuff that, like, the rest of the world doesn't have. Yeah. So they're just they're doing their own thing. Um and after the Avengers find out the Phoenix is coming, Captain America gathers the ranks, gets everybody his biggest players, and uh, decides to go down to Utopia and peacefully, you know, say, hey, we're here to take the girl. The Phoenix is coming. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a problem with that, right? Uh, we're just going to take your only hope. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally, we're taking your only hope because the Phoenix is coming. You guys understand, right? Everything should be okay. And Hope feels like she is totally ready. She she thinks she's ready. She's been training for this. Mm -hmm. I can do it. I can handle it. Whatever. Cyclops feels like she still needs more training. Captain America is like, I don't care. You guys just need to hand her over. Yeah. We'll protect her. We'll do what we need to do. And this brings up a good point at this point. <clears throat> um, because Cyclops says to Captain America, if you... You feel like you need to protect us or whatever. Where were you when all this happened? Mm -hmm. When mutants are being hunted down, you know, by all these groups or when all of us lost our powers, where were you to protect us? Mm -hmm. It's always been us protecting ourselves or protecting you guys, but no one's ever been there for the mutants. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. And Captain America is like, well, yeah, you know, you're right. We, mm -hmm. We'll do better next time, but let's just finish <laughs> this thing. And Cyclops is like, no, we're not doing yeah. this. So this is where the first battle kicks off. Mm. So Helicarrier comes down. All the Avengers jump out. Yeah, from by memory, we got Spider-Man, Red Hulk, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Daredevil. Uh, I think Miss Marvel's there as well. I think She-Hulk was there. She-Hulk. Um, we just got uh, everybody yeah, there. He literally brought everybody with him. Yeah. And then on the X-Men, we got all the big hitters there. We got Magneto, Emma Frost, uh, Storm, I believe, is there as well. Um, I don't know if Storm was there. Was she not I there? I think she came in after, like a few issues later. Okay. I think. Well, Gambit was there. I mean, all the big X-Men, yeah. you guys know. Um, and this is where this is that, that first crossing of the line, where things are going to get a little dicey for some characters yeah in cap's defense so cyclops did start the fight true true oh and also i should also point out the surviving mutants are kind of split mm -hmm. so there's mutants on utopia but there's also a different school that wolverine runs yeah uh, called the gene gray school for gifted youth um that one beast and wolverine run that school together so they have their yeah. own group of mutants there but Wolverine is on the side of uh, the Avengers at this point. Yeah. So he he was also there when Jean was killed by the Phoenix originally, and he knows the destructive power of the Phoenix, so he's really not trying to see that be done again, and he knows what he has to do, Yeah. and he's ready to do it. Because if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be Logan. Uh, so this battle's taking place on the island. 
Um, fists are being thrown, kicks are being kicked. Wolverine's ready to kill. And at the last second, Hope uses her power to basically incinerate him. Yeah. Right there. Uh, he wakes up later and she's gone. No one knows where she is. Uh, the X-Men let the Avengers go. And then the Avengers are just like, do your thing, whatever. <laughs> uh, it, I'm not going to jump through each issue because there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't isn't necessary. Yeah. But essentially, Hope runs away, mm-hmm. and she's just kind of sick of all the fighting. She's just like, just let me do my thing. Let me take care of the Phoenix. You guys are fighting for no reason, and I just want it to be over with. Yeah. But eventually, Wolverine and Cap have a falling out. Uh, Cap ditches Wolverine in like the Arctic or something like that. Yeah, because uh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't fully trust that he was gonna. Do what it needs do to be it, done. Yeah. yeah. Even though it's kind of weird that Cap is like, hey, I know what you want to do. <laughs> I'm totally cool with it. But, I mean, if you don't have to. If you're to, not going to do it, <laughs> then you need to <laughs> just get out of here. <laughs> so, eventually, Hope and Wolverine team up. And she's basically ready, not ready. Mm. Um, and the X-Men are just like, we got to take out the Avengers. <laughs> we got to let the Phoenix do its thing. We got to let it run its course. Yeah. Because if they stop it, who knows what else they're stopping? That could be the, the beginning of the real end for us. You mm-hmm. know, this could be our one step to get ahead of everything with the Phoenix. And so it all ends or all accumulates on the moon. The, the Phoenix is finally arriving. They're going to intercept it at the moon. The, the X-Men want to get there to get hope. In front of it, mm-hmm. the Avengers want to stop the Phoenix right there before it gets to Earth. So Cap tasked Tony with creating basically a Phoenix killing Iron Man armor. Uh, and then uh, the X-Men are really just there to not allow them to stop it. Mm-hmm. Huge battle breaks out. A ton of Avengers are there on the, the blue side of the moon so you, they can breathe. Uh, and essentially what happens is Tony thinks he kills the phoenix Mm -hmm. but really what he does is he splits it because hope is there ready to take it in but last second decide like feels like she's not ready for it too much power um so she kind of just like freaks out she she just kind of stalls and then tony shoots the phoenix with his his blast thinking he kills it but really all he does is cause more trouble yeah. Because it splits it into five. Isn't Tony kind of always at the center? Yeah. Or at least close to the epicenter of a huge problem. Yeah, usually. <laughs> <laughs> For being just a rich human being, that's really smart. He's at the center of a lot of these problems. Yeah. I can think of what this one, for one. Uh, <laughs> Judgment Day. Mm-hmm. He was involved with that one. Um, yeah. I mean, that's really part of his character. It's just... Yeah. Is he really a hero? I don't, he's, I don't know. He might be an anti-hero. <laughs> he's not a villain. But he's definitely not fully a hero. He does things with the right intentions. It just doesn't play out the way he thinks it does. Yeah. A lot of his problems that he has to... Like, a lot of the problems that he has to fix are caused by him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We might have to dissect Tony, <laughs> <laughs> break him down a little bit in a different episode. So now with the Phoenix Force split in five, mm-hmm. it's now split in, in with Cyclops, Emma Frost, uh, Namor, who's in this. Mm-hmm. He decided to play nice with the mutants this time and yeah. join their ranks. Uh, Ileana and Peter Rasputin. Yes. So like I explained earlier, Cyclops has his optic blast. Um, Emma Frost is a telepath, mm-hmm. uh, super strong, one of the strongest uh, telepaths on planet Earth. Yeah, she can also turn her whole body into a diamond-like material, so yeah. almost indestructible. Mm-hmm. Uh, Namor, like we've talked about before, fish out of water, you know, super strong. Wings breathe. On if you guys feet. have seen Black Panther, you know who Namor is. Yeah, uh, and then we have Peter and Ileana. So. 
Colossus at this time is also bonded with the gem of Cryotech. Mm-hmm. Sil- Sil- How do you pronounce? I don't know. It's the gem that turns the Juggernaut into the Juggernaut. Yeah. So he's the Juggernaut pretty much, but also Colossus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he can turn his skin into indestructible metal alloy, mm-hmm. but now he's truly indestructible as a Juggernaut. And Ileana is the the demon girl. Uh, she can open portals to Limbo. Is she the, the queen of Limbo at this point? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, because she's like fully powered up mm-hmm. at this point. Um, so yeah, she can, she basically has control over Limbo and the demons inside and is super strong. Yeah. Um, so the Phoenix is now this omnipresent, super powerful cosmic Bean is now split between the these five, five right? uh, who now go by the Phoenix Five. Yeah. And now all bit. their powers are heightened to the yeah. max. Super amplified. They all have, uh, if they didn't have it before, they have telepathy. Super just overpowered. Yeah. Um, and so now the Avengers are like, well, <laughs> <laughs> first we only had one person that we had to deal with. Then we had five super powered people who really can kill us with a snap of a finger we have to play this you know like really smart Mm -hmm. so the phoenix five start doing things that you may that you really wouldn't expect you know it's the phoenix destructive force Mm -hmm. and this and that but they really start using their powers for the better of all mankind so they start creating food where the food isn't able to grow they start Mm -hmm. putting water um, affordable housing, like anything that they can do really just to kind of show the world. Like, yeah, they're like actually bettering the world. Yeah, which the Avengers weren't doing. Yeah. That's Scott's whole thing. Like we're doing what you guys couldn't do. Mm-hmm. We're we're not a problem. We're not dangerous. We're actually helping out. And so uh, the event Cap is not, he's not liking that. He's You're going to show me up? He doesn't trust him. Pretty much, because he knows what's going to happen eventually. They're yeah. going to lose control. They're going to start, you know, burning everything around them until so there's nothing left, and they move on. Mm-hmm. So he starts thinking, "What are we going to do now to basically protect them or yeah. to protect the planet?" Um, I mentioned the Scarlet Witch earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, so earlier in the story, she has just kind of made her like public debut again. She's finally feeling better. Mm-hmm. Um, mentally kind of but there's still a lot of people who see her as a villain in a way so the x-men obviously don't like her for getting rid of all the other mutants Mm -hmm. uh some of the avengers mostly vision is not too happy with her being around yeah because she essentially turned him into a walking bomb which is for another story yeah so he's not happy to see her around and she's just kind of like, well, I'm just going to stay off to the side and not really do anything. Um, but now she she knows that her power is kind of what's going to turn the tides for the Avengers. What's going to help not only the Avengers, but hope mm-hmm. in terms of controlling the Phoenix. Because she does have immense power and she can kind of control the Phoenix, but they need to work together. Yeah. So... Long story short, we get to the Avengers basically getting their asses kicked everywhere they go. Mm-hmm. They're trying to, <laughs> to take out the Phoenix Five. There's no hope. But <laughs> they just keep getting their asses kicked, and the Phoenix Five just keep making them look even worse than they are. Yeah. Because why are you trying to you know, take us out when we're trying to help the planet? Mm-hmm. But eventually things start turning a little bit on the tides of the Avengers... Kind of, mm-hmm. but really it's be- causing bigger issues for the X-Men. Yeah. So Scott is, well, he's doing all this good stuff. He's sort of becoming power hungry and like bigger than his shoes. Yeah. You could tell that he starts to get to that point where like um, he's doing all this good because he believes that it's helping everybody. Yeah. But then he's getting... He's expecting, like, this applause and this ad- adornment from everybody. 
and he's not getting it and it's pissing him off. Yeah. So it's like that you can tell that, that dark side's starting to creep up. Yeah, then and that's what the Phoenix does. It'll kinda amplify those dark tendencies that you have. Yeah. I think you mentioned it before. <clears throat> so you'll start seeing, like you said, like Scott is kinda being like, Well, why aren't they appreciating all the stuff we're doing? Yeah. But Emma's also getting those tendencies where she's like, Well, I have all this power, I can just kill anybody at one. I can yeah. do literally anything I yeah, want. Yeah, she gets she got too equipped. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I can kill everybody. <laughs> like Colossus is, he's becoming more, not violent, but just more okay with hurting. He'll give you a warning, yeah, and that's the only warning you're getting. He's not <laughs> giving you extra chances to kind of walk away. Yeah. And Ileana is just ready to kill at any point as well. Yeah, and Namor is just back to his normal self. Yeah, he, <laughs> he really wasn't <laughs> phased by this at no. all. <laughs> this is just what I normally do. <laughs> So, Hope finally joins the X-Men. She's like, hey, I know I can do this. I want to help you guys out because these guys are... Something's not right going going on over here with the X-Men. Yeah. So, let me help you guys out. Oh, she out. joins the Avengers. Yeah. yeah. So, she joins the Avengers. Like, let me help you guys out. Teach me, you know, what I need to do. Mm-hmm. Scarlet Witch is also there to help out. And they go to uh, Kunlun where... Iron Fist is at, and yeah. they do start doing their training there. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, where I was talking about how like the different fights take place in the offside books. Mm-hmm. Um, in one fight in particular, well, in a lot of the fights, they're just capturing a bunch of Avengers. Yeah. So they're taking prisoners and this and that. Um, in one particular one where things start to go a little weird is uh, there's this huge volcano mountain filled with demons that they're holding some of the avengers in mm. they do a recon mission and save them but in that fight uh iliana and colossus lose their powers so mm. they're defeated so their powers go into the three remaining so namor uh, emma frost and scott yeah. so now that they have this power they start becoming more dark um and then this is where namor decides He's going to be the biggest asshole that he can be. <laughs> and he floods uh, Wakanda. And he kills millions of people just for the sake of really doing it. Uh, so he does that. Another fight happens. He loses his powers. And it's just now they're starting to stack up. Now mm-hmm. there's only two. Yeah. And with this, the Avengers are starting to see like, okay, we can kind of, you know, we can use this momentum to kind of get us going. Mm. Yeah, we're taking out some of these, you know, the Phoenix Five, mm. but it's they're transfer they're transferring their power to two other people who are immensely powerful. Yeah. So it ends up in a battle of, of, of really just Scott and Emma, mm. and this huge, and they they basically fight themselves. Yeah. And Scott has to take Emma's power, and he becomes. The Dark Phoenix at that point. Yeah. And so Professor X shows up and he's trying to convince Scott you, what you're doing is wrong. And he, he's tried to do this before. Yeah. Um, before he took all the power, he showed up and he's like, this isn't really what I was talking about when I said peace and all this. And Scott's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, out of your old man. And then it eventually accumulates to Scott killing Professor X. Yeah. He kills him. Out of anger, because he feels like no one is seeing that he's trying to help everybody. Yeah, he's just desperate. Like like you said in the beginning, like he just has his mind set on one thing, and it's hope being able to... Yeah, well, originally it was hope being able to save all of them. Yeah. But now because he has the Phoenix power, his whole thing is just that he needs to be able to bring back all the mutants and to bring new life back into their people. Yeah. Like and he has just, to be the one. To do yeah. It. And he's, he's stuck on it. So anybody that's going against him is, if it is, if you're not with me, you're against me. Yeah. And everybody's against him. At this yeah. Point. So he eventually kills professor X and he becomes a dark Phoenix. Yeah. Um, and then there's a huge fight and he loses the power. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much where it ends. Yeah. 
Now, I, I, I will say I did give it a disservice by not giving full detail of everything. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that's where we're trying to make changes to the show. We're still trying to figure out. I'm not trying not to do the full retelling of a story. Yeah. Like how we were before. I want to just kind of give, like, certain points and just... Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's obviously a lot more details in there um, that uh, will definitely help better the story. Mm. She... Does she get the powers after? Hope. Yeah. I believe she does. Yeah, she gets the powers. And, yeah, yeah, she does. And then uh, mutants start getting their... Yeah. Um, mutants that are people that previously had lost their mutant powers start gaining their powers back. Yeah. After a while. After she... It takes some time. She, like... She spent some time, like, really, like, honing it. But, yeah. They start getting their powers back. And this... This all leads to, like, the X-Men changing. Like, there at this point, there's two different X-Men teams again. Mm-hmm. So there's Scott and Emma and Magneto, who became criminals. So they were kind of doing, like, their underground thing. Yeah. And then there's, like, the true X-Men, who were not free. And then there's the Uncanny Avengers, uh, the other Avengers, which were... Uh, like Captain America, like a regular Avengers team. Then mm-hmm. there's the new Avengers, which is like the Illuminati. Yeah. Um, so this whole story branched out into a ton of new and different teams and new status quo for a lot of yeah. them. Scott did go to jail, though. He did, but then he broke out. Yeah, don't they always? <laughs> it's, it's, when superheroes and villains go to jail, do they ever really go to jail? <laughs> it's like they're you put them in a box for two weeks and then they're right back out. The shocker gets out of prison. I don't know how street level heroes get out like, of jail. You guys, this is supposed to be a supermax prison, meant for crim- like super powered criminals, and yeah. yet every one of these guys gets out. They're put. They're in jail for like two weeks and then let out for good, good behavior or something. Hey, you've been pretty chill the last couple of weeks. <laughs> you promise you're not going to do anything bad. Get out of here. <laughs> Just go. You're good. I'll write the paperwork up later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> But yeah, no, I um, it, I think it's good that you didn't. We, we're not giving like the full, complete, detailed everything because then it you get the gist of of the story from what you told us, and now everybody can go back and like fill in the details on everything. Yeah. Because it, yeah, it's I mean it's like I said, it didn't need to be twelve issues, but it was definitely at the end of the twelve issues, I wasn't like, damn, like. You really gave me twelve. I could you could have did this in eight. Like it's not bad. And I read the I read the side issues too. So I read like I think it's like sixteen or seventeen total. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was for me the the story itself. The beginning was I felt like hope was kind of annoying mm-hmm. because she was in the beginning like flying out of the like utopia and fighting crime on her on her own and mm-hmm. like yeah I can do this I can do this. And the Phoenix finally shows up, and she's like, I can't do this. Yeah. But then... Well, it's, it's kind of the sign of just... I get what you're saying, because it, it is annoying, but it's also kind of the sign of just, just a kid, so... Yeah. Because it's like... There's a, there was a lot of stuff that I thought of when I was younger, like, no, I could do this. And then it shows up, and it's like, oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I can't do this. <laughs> I'm in way over my head right now. This isn't going to work. I did kind of feel like the beginning or the end was kind of like they just kind of ended it just because they mm-hmm. had to end it, not yeah. really like giving like a good ending. Yeah, it it ended the way I I think a, a movie would end. We just have to wrap it up. Yeah, like uh, you guys wrote too much of uh, like the story in the middle and then forgot that you had to end it. <laughs> yeah. You're like, here's the, le- in 10 minutes, let's just finish everything. But overall, I think it's still a good story. I would read it again. A couple years down the road. Yeah. A couple years down the road, I'll read it again. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. Um, you want to take another break? Yeah, let's take another break. All right. <laughs> Other albums got a lot of other stuff on them, but not Johnny Storm. Johnny Storm is 100% heat. He doesn't need all that other stuff. 
Johnny makes music you can feel in your soul. Johnny Storm, Inferno, 100% heat. <laughs> break wow well, what a what a crazy story it was good i like it i like you said it was uh this is a story that meant something to you mm-hmm. because this is one of the first ones that you um you you bought we yeah. i mean we weren't getting comic books as we were, when we were younger yeah this yeah the, and especially because it kicked off so many like w- number one stories mm-hmm. like I remember I got Uncanny X Men when they relaunched that. I got Uncanny Avengers. Um, I think I got another X Men one too. Mm-hmm. So just really like knowing that okay, that's what happened in here, and I know what's happening into into these. I think I I read the ones that you had for this mm-hmm. when you first had it. And then I think that's when I started buying comic books right after that. Yeah, I think, yeah, you were, I have, you were getting some. I have a copy of um, New Avengers, number one, mm. at home. I know you were, you were reading, um, was it was it just Legion? Or is it X-Men Legion or something? X-Men or? Legacy. Yeah, no. that's what it was. X-Men Legion? It involved, but Legion. it was Legion. Yeah, yeah. The I was I mainly picked it up the first time because the cover was nuts, mm-hmm. and then every cover after that was just like crazy because I have like twelve of them. Um, but then uh, money got a little tight, and I just had to stop buying them. Yeah, same. so I was like, all right. But I I went back and looked at the rest of the covers. And all the ones that I didn't get, I wish I had. <laughs> I don't remember the story being super great. Yeah, I but. think I remember you telling, or I think I even read like a few of them, and I was just like, eh. I didn't really care for what was happening. Yeah. But those, all the covers, amazing, amazing artwork, buddy. I I really like variant covers. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's something about like I mean cuz even normal covers are like some of the sometimes. normal covers are really good. But like there's something about like a variant cover where it's like I can see that on my wall or like yeah. in my collection or something. There's so many like because like I I use uh the Comic Geeks Comic Geeks app mm-hmm. to make my pull list for every week. And then um, for every book, it'll show you every variant that they have for it. So then I, every week, I just go through my list, see what variants are coming out. I got, but I did finish for Fantastic Four. They the first four issues were uh, all Alex Ross mm-hmm. uh, covers, and it's just uh, the first one was Mister Fantastic, then uh, Ben, then Sue, and then this last one was Johnny. But I got all four of them super excited about it because i think crush only got if they i think they only got one or two each oh wow yeah so i lucked out because i I was i walked in on wednesday last week and i was like if that cover's not here i'm not buying it i'll wait i'll find it somewhere (laughs) but i'm not gonna buy it and then it was like it was hidden behind like three or four other ones so i got it and i got those uh the first two uh, Disney 100 Spider-Man variants. Oh, you got those? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Crush has, they're using a new app uh, for the orders and stuff. Mm. It's, called for, it's called like Comics Hub or something like that. Um, and you can, the, your pull list is set up on there. So you can add stuff to your pull list or take it off. I haven't figured out how to take it off yet because there's a few titles that I want to take off. Um but you can also like order like specific uh, covers and stuff like that. Okay. And you just put in the order, and then when that when it comes out that week, it's it'll be in your box. So I had already made sure that I had uh, pre-ordered the the next two Disney one hundreds. 
I keep wanting to um, go down to King Kong Comics mm. when I get off work. Just because uh, I, I want to buy more books, but I just yeah. don't have space for them. Mm. Um, week going and like yeah. reading something. So it's like I, I don't want to do that. I do want to go through their uh, graded books. Because mm-hmm. they had uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider number one for like 75 bucks graded. I think like like a nine or something. That was like bad. months ago. But I was going to buy it. Mm-hmm. And then I remember I got there and I like pulled it out. And I was like, what am I going to do with this? Like, <laughs> It's just going to sit somewhere. So I was like, no, I won't do that. But that's why that's why I like the variant covers. Cause I'm like, mm. it'd be nice to like grade and like have them on display and everything. Yeah. But I um, our our office for work, uh, we just moved offices. Mm. Um, so they were getting rid of a whole bunch of shit, like office supplies and stuff at our old office. And then um, they asked, uh, they asked us if you go oh, if you finish your day early, can you come in and help us kind of like clear things out. So there was one day I I didn't I didn't have anything to do so I was like I'll go over there and help, and then um, one of the managers was getting rid of a file cabinet because they they weren't taking anything to the new office mm-hmm. a chair a desk that's it, and he was getting rid of a file cabinet so I was like I might be able to use that, <laughs> and they were like if you guys if anything that we're throwing out if you guys want to take it take it we don't care, so I was like. Let me take this file cabinet. So I took it. Now it's in my garage, and that's where I put all my comic books. <laughs> and I got the the whole first drawer filled, and I like a quarter of the second drawer filled. Does it fit in pretty well? Yeah, yeah. They don't. Uh, they don't go all the way across, and I had to get like file separators to kind of organize it a little bit. But it's working out well so far. I got it all separated by Avengers, Spider Man, like everything. All in alphabetical order. I was going through my storage unit because, mm. like, yeah. I for, it was like a lot, like last month or something. We were putting the Christmas stuff away. Yeah. And I pulled out like one of the containers that had, just has my comic books in it. Mm. Huge, like, plastic one. And I was just going through everything. It's like, dang, I forgot I had this. I forgot I had this. I was like, oh, I want to like, I just want to go through and just look at all the different covers that I have because I know I have some yeah. cool like variant covers in there. Mm. No, uh, it's it's cool days. having the. I gotta clean my garage, but <laughs> it's cool just having everything like organized. Mm. Where I because before I just I had I bought like a, a comic book box mm. to store everything in, and it was cool, but like I didn't. And I, I have it or I had always had it organized like alphabetically, but um, without like the the file tabs and seeing what's what like you gotta like search through and like sometimes you're kind of like bending the books back and, yeah that what is this pulling it out and then putting it back so now it's a lot more organized yeah I'm a lot more happy with it now what's what I had to do with yeah I just use post its yeah. I put it on like the first one and that's what I knew. But it's just like, I remember I had, I had so many books. I still, I mean, I still have them, but it's one of those things. Yeah, once I fill this file cabinet, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because I don't know if Ariel's going to let me buy one. Now you got to decide, do you want to keep, are there books you still want to keep, books you don't want to keep? That's what I've been doing, like on stories that I, I start, I I get a number one and then I don't like it. Mm. Or, like, I, I make a couple issues in, and it's like, nah, I'm not finishing this. Um, I've just been donating them. Just taking it to Goodwill, and here you go. Toss, like, four or five books in there. See you guys later. Yeah, that's what I want to do, because I, like, I'm like, I know I don't need a storage thing for all of these books. Yeah. There's still some of that I do want to keep, but mm-hmm. for all of them, probably not, so. Well, listen... Since we're gonna start doing videos and stuff now, bring that bad boy over here. We'll look through it on for the show. See which ones you don't want to get rid of. See which ones, or see which ones you want to keep. See which ones you want to get rid of. We'll do it on camera. Make it a fun little thing for everybody. Why not? 
All right, guys, we are we're heading out of here. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for uh, give us some feedback on the on the new uh, format. Of yeah, things. we're still working on it. Yeah, so this is only our second episode of the new season, but uh, yeah, I know it, it might seem like things really haven't changed too much, but but we're making changes. Yeah, and uh, we'll be back in two weeks, and uh, in two weeks we'll have. An audio version and a video version. We're doing uh, we're doing our first character spotlight. So we'll stay see tuned you for that. Yeah, we'll see you then. <laughs> Peace out. Bye.